Well, it's day one of the corruption trial for New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez, Democrat, and there has already been plenty of drama. Dominic Carter, he's been at the federal courthouse in Newark all day following the action, and he joins us now. Dom? And good evening, Richard. Judge William Wall said this trial could last for up to six weeks, and today each side came out swinging. Just seconds into his nearly hour-long opening statement, lead prosecutor Peter Kosky tore into Senator Robert Menendez, alleging Menendez lived a lavish lifestyle of $1,500 a night Paris hotel rooms, specifically requested with limestone bathrooms to trips to the Caribbean, all paid for by eye doctor Dr. Solomon Melgen. Menendez is accused of intervening with federal officials on behalf of Melgen in exchange for the lavish gifts and major political contributions. Standing in front of the jury, Kosky said, quote, this case is about a corrupt politician who sold his Senate office for a lifestyle he couldn't afford. Adding, Senator Menendez betrayed the people of New Jersey every time he lied about the lavish gifts he received from Dr. Melgen. Menendez arrived on day one with his son and daughter, choking back tears. I am thankful for the <clears throat> countless New Jerseyans who have either called me or called my office and say they have my back as I've had theirs. When it was his turn, the lawyer for Menendez went to the heart of the problem for prosecutors with the 2016 Supreme Court ruling that overturned Virginia Governor Bob McDonald's conviction and narrowed the definition of bribery. Terms like quid pro quo and official acts by Menendez will play a major role in this trial. High profile defense lawyer Abby Lowell told the jury, quote, the government has to prove a corrupt relationship existed. It's not a bribe for one friend to give another friend a gift. Fellow New Jersey Senator Cory Booker was also in the courtroom. Supporters of the senator also appeared at the courthouse. He started his political career fighting corruption, so he is not going to end his career in this manner. And there's still a lot of fight in him. Then there's the balance of the U.S. Senate, and if Menendez is convicted, will he step down before Governor Christie leaves office in January? In that case, Christie would name his replacement, probably a Republican, or does Menendez try and hang on until a new administration takes office, which polls indicate will be a Democrat? The Republican National Committee is already trying to up the ante for Menendez to go immediately in a social media ad. A stoic Senator Robert Menendez reporting to federal court this morning as a federal defendant. Menendez was indicted by the Justice Department on 14 felony counts. So finally, Richard, a lot of personality in this courtroom today. At one point, Judge Walls, while arguing over a motion with defense counsel, told the lawyer to, quote, shut up. At another time, the judge told defense counsel, quote, just bill me. So what will happen? Opening statements will resume early on in the a.m. tomorrow morning, and then the first witness will be called to the stand. Reporting from federal court in Newark, I'm Dominic Carter. Richard, let's go back to you. you know, All right, Dominic. Up for that umbrella, oh, no, no. You think? Dom's got his props. Got to let him have that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to go back to the panel now. And what I'm going to do is I've got a specific question for each e attorney individually. And I want to look at a certain aspect of the trial. Mark, give the prosecution's case here. I'm going um, to give an opening statement. Have? Yes. Yeah, so okay. give me what they're trying to prove and the strongest elements of their case. Ready? Yes. So Senator Robert Menendez sold his office to the highest bidder, in this case a wealthy Florida doctor, and betrayed the public's trust along the way. For some seven years, the evidence will show, the doctor plied Menendez with roughly a dozen all-expense-paid flights aboard luxury private jets, lavish vacations in places like Paris and the Dominican Republic, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions. In exchange, the evidence will show, Menendez used the power of his office to lobby and pressure executive branch officials on the doctor's behalf. Specifically, the senator helped secure visas for foreign girlfriends of the doctor 
and he pushed executive officials to intervene on the doctor's behalf in two multi-million dollar business disputes. One involved a lucrative cargo inspection contract in the Dominican Republic, the other a nine million dollar Medicare overbilling scheme. That's nine million. The sheer number and value of the benefits the doctor showered on Menendez proved beyond any doubt that they were corrupt quid pro quo bribes, not mere gifts or gestures of friendship. And in the end, I'm confident that you, the jury, will find Senator Menendez guilty on all counts charged. Okay. If we've learned anything in the last year or so, Mark, Supreme Court ruling mm -hmm. and even local cases that right. we saw, uh, starting with Shelley Silver and maybe even with Skelos, it's a definition of what the quid pro quo is. Right. Why, if McDonald got off, couldn't Menendez, when it isn't proven in effect, that he forced any Washington entity to do anything, right. speaking on someone's behalf, whether he's a friend or not, that's not criminal, at least according to the Supreme Court. Well, it's a little bit more uh, com uh, subtle than that because uh, McDonald says that if you uh, pressure, pressure another uh, government official to take an action uh, uh, on your uh, benefactor's behalf, knowing or intending to influence the outcome of the decision, that could be enough. Okay. Uh, so to that, that point, Mayo, in McDonald. Yeah. does this go from asking to, to pressure? Make the case for the defense. It's not pressure. What <laughs> you have here is nothing different than what occurs every single day in each of our lives. We have friends. We do things for our friends. We give gifts to our friends. We receive gifts from our friends. And even though Senator Menendez is a public figure, he doesn't lose his First Amendment rights to associate with people that he wants to associate with. But can he use his office? Um, and the power that comes along with the office to try and influence whether it's um, special allowances for someone. In this case, uh, Dr. Melgin, he's had problems with the feds, uh, including uh, some pretty unsavory stuff. And he's trying to restore, I guess, some Medicare uh, allowances that would be afforded to him. When does it go from speaking on your friend's behalf to abusing your office? Well, you bring up a great point, and basically, you look at the jury pool right now as being compromised based upon uh, uh, actions taken by the prosecution because the pretrial memo is unnecessary. It wasn't asked for by the judge. Uh, it's not routine. You mean the pretrial press release? Press release, absolutely. Mm. And basically, there, all they did was attempt to smear uh, Mr. Melendez, and they said that basically that he went to. Punta Cana. Uh, millions of people go to Punta Cana. It's not an exclusive place where the average middle class person couldn't save and go there. It's probably cheaper than Disney. So to make it seem like he's there and hey, Jay-Z's been there and Beyonce's been there, he must be guilty. Uh, when you have wealthy friends, they give you bigger gifts. Mm. Okay. And when you look also beyond that, uh, he hasn't done anything uh, that gives the impression that he actually sold his office. So there's no indication whatsoever thus far that there's any pressure that's been exerted by him. All right. Um, Except and that he didn't Lord disclose knows, you've seen any photos of the gifts. Of, right? of Doug in Putacana with the snorkeling <laughs> gear. But, but Doug, let's talk some law cards, specifically the doctor, Dr. Melgen, the friend here. Uh, that I wish that I could, I bet you that uh, Mr. Menendez, which he never made, um, he's certainly seems like, remember that guy Curveball that was originally, <laughs> right? Uh, this guy's got an unsavory record, um, and he's supposedly been a cooperating witness. He's going to be a big player here, won't he? Well, if he's a cooperating he people have to know that he has been convicted of a, of a different crime, right. and he's pending sentencing now. He asked for that sentencing to be delayed till after this trial. If he becomes a witness for the state and testifies against the senator, it could be very difficult for the senator. But, but then again, he would be like anybody else who's cooperating to, for, to benefit himself. So... That's How about who testifies and who doesn't here? Uh, I know that Menendez, the senator, wanted to delay the trial. Um, a lot of important votes. They made a clear note the trial is going to start. And by the way, if you skip court um, to go vote, that's on you here. You're going to not get any allowances with the jury. They're going to see you're not in the room. Talk about the pros and cons, uh, these two particular gentlemen, including the senator, of testifying or not. Well, you mean testifying? Fine. On their own behalf, well, yeah. Well, two things. First off, he wants to obviously take breaks so that he can go down and be a senator and do great things for, and so that look the people jury, sitting right? on the jury could say, oh, look at him, he's doing a great job for us, let's not get him in trouble. So that's one thing. It, it's clear that the judge saw that that could potentially be an issue. And Dominic brought up a good point. There was actually friction in the courtroom. The, the judge, the uh, attorneys for the senator may be actually trying to create some sort of appealable issues 
for some reason they may not like this judge. They want to make. The, he's he's to, a ter to be blunt. He's an absolutely terrible judge for the defense. One of the worst judges that you could possibly draw uh, anywhere, and certainly in that district. So the wild card is they may be trying to draw him into some sort of fight that later and it's, on. And it's easy to draw that judge into a fight. The, they already have a terrific. Sounds like a man who speaks yeah. from experience. Now, a, a terrific <laughs> a, a issue that hasn't been resolved by the judge because. Uh, I'm following this case very closely because it has parallel legal issues to one that, that I'm uh, about to file motions on. Uh, he wrote a very, very powerful sweat, uh, set of pretrial motions to throw out the charges, and the judge just ignored half of the motions. In that, I won't get into the weeds of it too much here, but it involves the, the validity of what they call a stream of benefits theory, and certainly the McDonald decision in one of the lesser known aspects of that opinion cast doubt on the vitality of this theory. And basically what McDonald says is they have to prove that Menendez, that the agreement entailed concrete uh, and specific actions. Uh, you get uh, in classic quid pro quo fashion, this for that. What the government has alleged in this case and in, in the case that I'm currently working on, uh, they just said he was going to do favors for Melgin on an as needed ad hoc, ad hoc basis as opportunities arose. And McDonald yeah. strongly implies that that's not good enough, and no court has yet to address that aspect of the McDonald rule. And to Mark's point, the McDonald decision, the Supreme Court's ruling on this, has really changed these corruption cases going forward. You're right, and it continues to evolve, and you saw that with Shelley Silver conviction being overturned. But the, you, you mentioned before about him testifying. Yeah. It's interesting with a case like this that I think that he possibly, he probably will testify in this case because he is a senator and people expect it. I hate to say it, but that's true. And a lot of his life is actually in the papers every day and things he does. So it's probably he can tell his story and do it in a sympathetic way. But this is a case where um, a ca if he testifies, it doesn't become beyond a reasonable doubt. It go becomes, yeah. do you believe him? It really, yeah. be really becomes his burden. Uh, a and he can't now, be con convicted based upon uh, you know, his friend's conduct. And yeah. that seems to be really what they're focusing and on. And then it also depends on the jury. We all have one friend uh, that you, you know, that you just shake this your is head. A very, says, this is a very this good guy. friend. Yeah. This is, a, this this is, is a $115 million right. dollar friend. Well, this is a good people friend. people haven't seen the video, I'm going to show them after the break here. It's going to drop your uh, jaw here. It shows a police officer arresting a nurse in broad daylight for refusing to give up a blood sample, opening up a whole host of both legal and policing issues. We're going to explore those after the break. Stay with us.